Populism in politics is not a new phenomenon. There has always been politicians who pander to the public, appeal to the masses, and remain famous or infamous due to their can-do attitudes and encouraging promises. Yes, however, with the rise of Donald Trump in the U.S., Rodrigo Duterte in the Philippines, many of those aspiring to be leaders reach out to the population and give them what they want to hear. And to talk to us more about this, we have with us Jonathan Emont, a journalist who is familiar with the trend. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, this is a global trend, uh, not just in the West, but also in Asia. Uh, wh why has this come about in recent years? Yeah, well, I think that um, across many countries that elect these populist leaders, there's a lot of nervousness among the poor and middle class that they're falling behind. Mm. There's a sense that countries' leaders uh, don't have power right now to control global trends, global economic trends, mm. uh, rising immigration and refugee crises. So I think that this leads populations to increasingly elect people who are able to talk a really strong game, even if they don't necessarily have the powers to live up to that. Yes, because uh, uh, people like Donald Trump and even Duterte, they kind of say things that are uh, quite rude in, in a way. So um, is, is, is it because uh, the, there's a change in society that they, they want their politicians to kind of say what, what they want to hear as opposed to just be polite? Or? Right, yeah. I think uh, in both the United States and Philippines, you have sort of a similar situation where even as the economies continue to grow in both countries, mm -hmm. and economists would say that the economies over the last four or six years have actually been doing well, uh, for most people, they haven't been feeling that. And so I think this leads to a lot of poorer and less maybe educated people uh, in both countries feeling that they want to lash out at the political establishment. And one way of doing that is electing a man in Duterte's case mm -hmm. who makes jokes about rape, right. uh, who talks about just executing criminals mm -hmm. willy-nilly. Um, with Donald Trump, it's interesting because he hasn't actually been elected, right? Mm -hmm. And he probably won't be elected, uh, okay. just according to polls. Mm -hmm. um, so with Donald Trump, he's managed to appeal to sort of white rural voters who feel left behind mm -hmm. uh, in America today and uh, who don't have any time for what they would term political correctness, mm -hmm. but right. a lot of us would term being tolerant towards other races. Mm -hmm. okay. now what about the elite uh, group back then, like Soharto, and then we have Bill Clinton. Now, are the people just um, sick of politeness? They've always been polite, and uh, like, um, it's different from how Donald Trump and Duterte acts, or, or speaks, in fact, right? Now, now, why do you think it's that? Why do you think the, the um, people are actually sick of the elite group? Yeah, it's, that's sort of an interesting trend, right? You see people like Donald Trump is saying things that would have been impossible to say in America yeah. um, five years ago. Uh, and it's, it's a really negative trend because you shouldn't be able to say racist things as a, right. as a, um, as a candidate for the, the highest office in the United States. Um, I, I don't... I, I don't, but but the, but what I think is going to happen is I think Donald Trump isn't going to win. So I think that's I think I think because of his rhetoric, he's probably going to lose very badly. I don't think there are enough people who actually want to hear those type of sentiments. With Duterte's case, um, I'm less familiar with the Philippines, but uh, I suspect that some of the things he's saying just um, might not be quite as impolite there. I mean, some of, some of his statements are just horrible about joking about right. raping a, mm -hmm. a, a, a nun. I can't. I can't. I can't imagine how anyone could have voted for him. But yeah. apparent, uh, I so that's that's difficult for me to explain. Yeah, but how is it that people still, you know, he still get votes after saying that? People right. want to hear it, yeah. or well, right. So I think one one thing that's interesting about say both Donald Trump and Duterte is they mm -hmm. say such outlandish, horrible things, but they're both none of them got the majority of the votes. So yeah. in the Republican Party, there were 17 candidates. Donald Trump distinguished himself from the other 16. Mm -hmm. Duterte as well, there were so many pr uh, mm -hmm. Filipino presidential candidates. He did not get 50% of the vote. He got, what, in the 30s, right? Mm -hmm. However, when you speak like that, you're going to attract attention. And so right. part of it is just a structural thing where when you have these huge fields of candidates, mm -hmm. uh, anyone who's able to distinguish themselves, mm -hmm. potentially by saying things that we would say are horrible and should not be said, yes. they might still manage to attract, if not, they won't get the majority of votes, mm -hmm. but they might get enough to win. Whereas if you have them against a bunch of very polite contenders, mm -hmm. well, then then all the polite contenders will blend into each other and won't get, and that's why you saw in Duterte's case, you had uh, Grace Poe getting 20% mm -hmm. of the vote, mm -hmm. another person getting 20% of the vote. Together, that's more than Duterte's votes, yes. but that's not how the Philippine system works. Mm -hmm. Right, but uh, there, there is a bit of a dilemma because um, these politicians, they, they say what people want to hear, uh, but do you think they can go ahead with these policies that they are saying right now, for example, Donald Trump and the wall? I mean, is he actually going to do that? I mean, 
I mean, if, if Donald <coughs> Trump gets elected president, and we have to assume that there's a very small chance of this happening, I have no idea what's going to happen. The United States has never elected anyone right. uh, like that. I mean, he, it's not just the wall. I mean, the wall is ridiculous. It would mm -hmm. be useless. But there's also, you know, he, he's spoken about withdrawing American military bases across um, all of um, East Asia, encouraging right. Japan and South Korea to get nuclear weapons. I mean, this is, the, the, it, it's, it's very weird to be having these statements coming out of um, a, uh, the, the, the Republican right. candidate for yeah. president. Right. And, um, that's, I mean, not, not just Donald Trump, but in the past there have been populist uh, politicians who yep. won votes. Um, how do you keep the balance between uh, keeping these kind of populist views and, and policies and implementing policies? Like, how do you compensate right. with both? How have they done it in the past? Right, so if you look at somebody like Barack Obama, right. and of course populism, it's a broad term, so you could argue that Barack Obama mm -hmm. was a, a populist, he tried to channel popular aspirations, mm -hmm. he, um, argue things that were very popular, but that the political establishment wasn't always doing. For example, withdrawing American troops from the Middle East, mm -hmm. um, giving health care to America's poor, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting about Barack Obama is on his key pledges, he actually was able to deliver. What's different about somebody like Barack Obama and Donald Trump is that Barack Obama was only saying things that were in the realm of possible. Mm -hmm. right. Now, that's also a diff distinction between Barack Obama and Bernie Sanders, who's um, a left-wing Democratic contender for the presidency, who's suggesting things that many of which it's hard to imagine them happening in America. For mm. example, free okay. uh, university, um, moving to a single-payer healthcare system, it would just require it would require a fundamental shift of how mm -hmm. politics works in the United States. So, okay. yeah. moving on to Indonesia now. Now, um, Indonesia has been ruled by the elite for so long. Even Joko is ruled by uh, Megawati, right? Now, do you think Populist has a chance to fight the system in Indonesia? Yeah, I think a really encouraging trend in Indonesian politics is that since 2004, when we started having local direct elections, mm -hmm. you started seeing sort of a new generation of politicians, people like Ahok, people like Jokowi, exactly. people like yeah. Ridwan Kamil. Um, the mayor of Surabaya, uh, and at the local level, they're often much more effective than when they get mm -hmm. to the national level. Mm -hmm. At least uh, that's what Jokowi's case seems mm -hmm. to be. Where at the local level, they actually do have significant power to do what their constituents want. Then when they rise up, they go up against the vested interests of the oligarchs, mm -hmm. party leaders um, who mm -hmm. control the news media, yeah. uh, who uh, control control so much. And mm -hmm. then that's when they tend to struggle. Now, uh, what about Ahok? Ahok is not a populist, though, but he gets. I, people like him. You know? Yeah, like I mean, again, populist is a broad term. I think you could potentially classify Ahok as a populist. Right. His mm -hmm. strategies of getting popular votes, mm -hmm. right? He he gives lectures, you know, sort of very rude lectures sometimes yeah. for his yeah. bureaucrats who are uh, mm -hmm. who are seen as lazy. Um, right. That's a way of um, of showing the public that you know he he cares. He's with them. He right. understands their frustration. Mm -hmm. He feels it. So uh, so in that sense, he is a uh, populist. But you're right. Uh, mm -hmm. He also. He also sort of has instincts that maybe make him more like technocratic, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, more more like you know the ruling class. He's also very rich himself, so right. Uh, because uh, for example, he he does a lot of evictions and demolition. That's right. Of these uh, residential yeah. areas, I have a lot of very poor people, and he doesn't. They don't. Uh, they don't get new housing sometimes. So that's right. not populist, but he he's it's working. His right. So it's kind of a dilemma, right? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, right. Yeah, I mean, I think I think one of the yeah, well, and again, po I guess uh, Indonesians are very frustrated often because their politicians don't get things done. Right. So yes. usually if you're a politician, you can prove that you can get things done. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't even matter almost what you do. Right. <laughs> as long as you say, I'm going to do this, and then it you happens, right. uh, I think uh, Indonesians often are very appreciative. Mm -hmm. right. uh, do, do, do you think this trend is dangerous, uh, uh, this, this kind of pop populist politicians, <coughs> because they say whatever they want, <coughs> just to win votes, and it's kind of effective, but in a way, it will get people like Donald Trump elected. I mean, do you think it's it's not a good thing, this trend? Well, I, I think, uh, yeah, uh, politicians like Donald Trump are a horrible trend. Um, Donald, <laughs> Donald Trump, I mean, he has no governing experience. Mm, yeah. he, um, he says racist, sexist things. Yeah. Um, somebody like Duterte um, is a little more interesting because he has governing experience. He was actually relatively successful um, mayor there and he, and some of the things he calls for make sense mm -hmm. um, Philippines everything is concentrated in Manila he wants um, resources to be expanded outwards mm -hmm. to potentially decentralize sort of as is done in Indonesia maybe that makes sense it's a reasonable thing to argue mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. um, so but then 
I guess he feels that isn't sufficient for getting him votes for distinguishing himself from the crowd. And that's why this probably very smart person is uh, deciding to say things that are so vile. But mm -hmm. we shouldn't tolerate that vileness. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. politicians, I mean, he said horrible things. I yeah. think he should be yeah. uh, called out on that. And it's, it's not to the credit of the Philippines that he mm -hmm. could say those things and become elected their president. So there is a pro and con to being a populist, yeah? yeah man. Thank you so much for Thank your you time. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. Great. And coming up next, we've got the latest sports updates for you. That's next on World Hours. Stay with us.